Hey y'all, tonight we are gonna make goulash. I have not made goulash in a while, and I seen Julia Pacheco make goulash, which made me think, you know what, I have not made goulash in forever, but I'm doing something a little different. I was out of hamburger meat, and the meat market where we buy hamburger meat is closed on Mondays. So, I still wanted to make it, and so my husband's like, hey, I was gonna get ground turkey. He's like, hey, why not use some sausage? Because we had a package of just Jimmy Dean if you can see that Jimmy Dean just regular sausage so you know what we're gonna give it a try so I have one pound of Jimmy Dean sausage one onion that I finally diced up and we're gonna start cooking this together I'm only gonna cook this on about medium heat because I don't want I'm sorry and I'm not feeling the best so if I sound like my nose is running it probably because it is <laughs> anyways I'm gonna cook this on like medium heat because I don't want to cook the sausage too fast so it'll burn I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a little salt and pepper in here. I know that the sausage has already kind of got some seasoning. So I'm gonna add a little salt and then some black pepper. And we will add some more seasoning just for now. I think I'll just kind of, I'm also gonna add in some uh, garlic cloves, but I'll wait just a little bit before I add it. So I will let this start to cook and then I will bring you back and show you what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna go ahead and add in three cloves of minced garlic. So I have a little bit left in this jar and it's probably around three cloves. I'm just gonna use what's left of that. Just pour it in here. So it may be a little over, but it'll still be good. I love garlic. Sorry about the noise, I have my fan on in here. So we're just gonna continue to cook all this until uh, the meat is done. to show y'all something real quick um i could not find the petite diced tomatoes it calls for a can of those or well it calls for a can of just diced tomatoes but i wanted the petite di dice because my kids don't really like big chunks of tomatoes so i'm just going to attempt to i don't know if this is going to work i was going to attempt to use this meat thing like you use to cut up meat to see if i i don't know if it's gonna if i could uh maybe cut these up into smaller pieces I don't know if it chopped them up very good, but I tried. <laughs> Better yet, I'm going to use these little kitchen shears and I'm just gonna kind of go through and just kind of roughly cut these so that my kids won't be saying that there's the um, tomatoes are <laughs> too big. So, Should have thought about this sooner. I could have just done it while they were all still crammed in the can, maybe a little easier, but I don't know what I was thinking. I'm not feeling good today, so my mind is just not thinking probably clearly enough. <sighs> like that. That's even making me tired, y'all. Just cutting with these scissors. Okay, I'm gonna finish this. <laughs> okay, y'all. I'm going, I've got most of the grease out of here now. I'm gonna go ahead, this is a 14, I think it was a 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And you're gonna put it in there with the juice and all. So we're also going to add in a 14 and a half or 14.5 ounce can of beef broth. We're going to add in a 10.75 ounce can of tomato soup. I'm going to also add in about uh, one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. If I'm saying it right, I always say it wrong, so you know me. So there's about one, and then, well, it might be closer to two, but on this, I just kind of I'm just kind of throwing stuff in here, no particular way. It's not exactly the way my mom and daddy made it, but pretty close. My daddy would actually put a can of corn in it, but I'm not gonna do that today. 
I'm going to also add in some bay leaves. Um, I don't think my parents did that or even myself ever. But when Julia Pacheco was making hers, she actually added some in. So I thought, hey, that might be good. So I'm going to add, and if you haven't never cooked with bay leaves, you know, you take those out before you serve it. I'm also going to add in a little more salt and pepper. Actually, I'm probably not going to add any more salt because the tomatoes are going to have some salt. So I'm going to put a few pinches of salt. I think it would taste good with some oregano. So I'm actually going to put uh, some oregano in here. Just kind of sprinkle some in. Then I think, oh, I also want to add some sugar to kind of take away, you know, tomato sauce has that bitter, or I don't know, how do you explain it? Is it kind of, not really bitter, it's just kind of a, a tangy taste, and I like to add a little sugar when I'm doing stuff like this. So I'm actually going to add like two teaspoons of sugar to it, and then I'm going to let this kind of come up to where it starts simmering. Oh, this would have been real good with some bell pepper in it too. I think that's one thing my mama and daddy used to put in it, but I don't have any bell pepper. So if you have bell pepper, chop up some bell pepper, like green bell pepper, I think that would be good in it. But I'm going to try to get this up to a simmer and then I'm going to cover it and I'm going to let it simmer for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. And then we're going to add in our pasta. And I'm just going to use two cups of elbow macaroni. I believe I have that. If not, I'll show you when I get to that point. But um, that's what we're going to do next. Now I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I want to keep it simmering so that these flavors can get in there. And uh, I'm going to cover it. I'm going to set my timer for... I'll do 20 minutes because I have enough time. And that's what we're going to do. We'll just let this simmer and I'll keep a check on it, making sure it's not getting too hot. Okay, y'all, it has been ooh, over here simmering for about 20 minutes. I did not have any elbow noodles, but I had um, some of the kind of large uh, shells. Not really large, but I had small and then I had this size. So I'm adding about two cups of that in here and now we're gonna let it cook for probably another oh maybe 10 to 15 minutes I'll just keep a check on it until they're done and then once they're done we will remove that bay leaf that's in there so I'm just gonna cover this up and I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes let me turn up just a little bit more and let that go okay y'all these are done or this is done, so I'm going to take that leaf out. I got the first one. I have another one in here, so let me find it. So we can get it out. Where is the other leaf? Well, there it is. <laughs> okay, so there's that. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top of here. And I'm also making, I think I showed y'all this before. I'm gonna show y'all again. It's the, I opened this already, the Cornbread Swirls by Pillsbury. I have them right here, and I'm about to put them in the oven and bake those. And so I am going to set my timer on that for 15 minutes. This needs to be turned off, but um, I'm going to sprinkle some cheese, some sharp cheddar cheese. Um, sprinkle some cheese on top. And then I'm just going to put this lid on it. And I'm just going to let this sit here while my um, cornbread swirls are baking. And then we will come back and show you everything and let you know what we think. Hey Adrian, how do you like this goulash? Is it good? Oh 
Oh man, my husband, you like it? Because he's already finished up. Oh, he gave two thumbs. And then he actually likes these cornbread swirls too, and he's not a big cornbread fan. How about you, Kiki? That's good. Is it good? She's not feeling so good. Me and her both kind of got something going on. I'm feeling a little bit better. What about me? Anyways, y'all, this, y'all look at it. Good, mm, look at that cheese. Very good, very good. Highly recommend it. Thumbs up for me and Kiki too. Hey y'all, welcome to tonight's What's for Dinner. I'm still a little bit sick with a cold, so if I'm sniffling or whatever, please excuse me. I'm sorry, but I have a my pot right here, and I'm going to put a pound of, if I can get it open, of lean ground beef in here, and then it calls for one onion, diced onion, and uh, I actually had um, a purple onion, or some people call it a red onion. I always call it a purple onion, but I think it's really called red, but anyways. I had one of these and I thought I would just use it. So that's what I'm, I diced up real small. I'm dropping it everywhere. And so we're going to, try to get all in there. We're going to um, cook this up and I'm going to go ahead and season it with some salt and pepper. And I'm going to go ahead and put some onion powder in there with it. I love onion powder. I mean, did I say onion powder? Y'all, I can't think straight. Garlic powder. Sorry, I'm not feeling the best. So if I did say onion powder, I meant garlic. My bad. So I'm going to turn this probably around medium, a little over medium. Not quite medium high, but a little over medium. And I'm going to cook this up. And then once this is all cooked, there ain't going to be very much grease in here. But if there was grease, you would want to go ahead and drain your grease before you move on to adding your other stuff. And I have a lot of canned goods over here, y'all, that we're going to be, I'm trying to get y'all up here, that we're going to be adding in there. As you can see, I got, I needed 29 ounces of tomato sauce. All I had was four 8-ounce um, cans, so we're going to have a little over, like 32 ounces, but I think it'll be alright. I have a can of enchilada sauce, two cans of chili beans, a can of whole kernel corn, and a can of chicken broth. So, that is some of the stuff we're going to be adding next. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, brown this up. And then I will bring y'all back for the next part. Okay, y'all. Our meat is now done. So we're going to start adding in everything. I'm going to start out with the tomato sauce. And like I said, it calls for 29 ounces. But I didn't have a 29 ounce can. I only had these 8 ounce cans. And so I'm just going to use four of those. So I'll be a little over. I think it's going to be just fine. And then we're going to add in our chili beans, which I have two cans. And on the chili beans, let's see, they are to be drained, so I'm going to drain them. There's the first can. Okay, and we're going to do the uh, can of whole kernel corn, which also needs to be strained. I hear noise. Huh? Our chicken broth. And then our can of red enchilada sauce. I'm just using the mild. Stir all that up, and we're also going to add in some ground cumin. 
Uh, we're gonna need one tablespoon of ground cumin, which I'm about to add right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn that up some. I had turned it down. I'm gonna turn it back up because we wanna bring this back up to a boil. And then we're gonna reduce the heat and we're gonna cover it and simmer it for about 20 minutes. Starting to was starting to boil, but I thought it was um sticking to the bottom, so I turned it up some or turned it down some. So I'm about to cover this up. And like I said, let it simmer. Try to turn it some more. I think I'm gonna let this simmer for about. I have 20 had this um, simmering for 20 minutes. I'm gonna add in. It called for eight ounces of shredded Monterey Jack cheese. But what I'm going to do is I have some mild cheddar cheese. I'm going to pour probably around half of that in here. And then I'm going to add in some of this Fiesta blend cheese. And you're going to want to stir this in until the cheese is melted. And then um, serve it with like tortilla chips which I didn't have a whole bag of tortilla chips, but we have some flavored tortilla chips. If we run out, we'll use those. And with sour cream, and if you want, you can add more cheese on top of your bowl of soup too. So, I am about to go set this on the table, and we will let you know how we like it. Adrian, how do you like this soup? Good? What, kind of iffy on you? Yeah, I don't really like tomato soup. It's kind of like it, but it's tomato soup. It's not tomato soup. You mean taco soup? They keep saying it's like taco soup. Okay, honey, how did you like it? Didn't like it at all. Uh, yeah, he already finished. Are you going back for more? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, whoa. Okay, Courtney, how did you like it? Oh, yeah, she, um, she's been doing this thing with the bandana, her new little style. Okay. Um, I like it. It tastes just like taco soup. It does not have the same stuff in it that I she's put in just, taco soup. She's just jealous that taco soup is better it tastes than like taco water soup. soup. They, I don't know. It's, it's totally very, different. But it's good. Okay, Bryce. Bryce is not really a taco soup fan, so he wasn't too excited about this. He's like, Can why didn't you? the exact same as taco soup. Not really. He was like, why didn't you just make enchiladas? But I was going for soup today. I didn't feel good. I wanted soup. I like enchiladas because it has tortillas. It's, you're eating tortilla chips. But these are hard tortillas. <laughs> we do know how to say tortillas, by the way. I like it. <laughs> but anyways, I it's good. Tortillas. I like it. It's good. It's off. Whatever. <laughs> Just kidding. It's good. Good morning, y'all. I'm going to be making ribs in the crock pot. And please excuse my voice. I am... <laughs> I'm sick with a cold. <laughs> but we're going to make... Sorry, we're going to make a rib, slow cooker ribs, and uh, I'm going to start out with a cup of barbecue sauce. I have one rack of ribs, by the way, uh, pork ribs, and I'm going to start out with a cup of barbecue sauce, and I'm just using the Sweet Baby Ray's Honey Barbecue Sauce. We're gonna add in a tablespoon of brown sugar. And then I have some minced garlic. And we're gonna add in a good tablespoon of that. We're also gonna <clears throat> add in a teaspoon of Worcestershire, <laughs> a teaspoon of that. And then it's optional if you'd like <clears throat> to add in some cayenne pepper. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle some about like that. And then I'm going to mix all this up. This is very simple. You just basically mix all this up and we're going to go put almost all of it we're going to reserve a little bit but we're going to put it on our ribs which i've already removed the membrane and i cut them in half 
just so that they would fit into the crock pot. And here is our rack of ribs. And I'm just gonna kind of drizzle a little bit of it over. This will stand up there. Well, maybe. I was gonna drizzle a little bit over that one and then a little bit over this one. And then I was gonna rub it. Then I'm gonna uh, take my little brush and just kind of rub it over it real good. I'm gonna go ahead and just put some salt and pepper on these. Wipe this off and then we're gonna cover this up and let it cook on low for seven to nine hours. So this is gonna be real easy to make and y'all, when you see these ribs when they're done, you're gonna be like, yum. <laughs> Anyways, we will come back in just a little bit when they're finished. Okay, y'all, this has been cooking all day. I'm about to check it. Oh yeah, look at that. They're just falling off the bone. These are gonna be so good, y'all. Look at that. Oh. Okay, now I'm fixing to get these out. I was gonna put them in the oven and kind of put some more barbecue sauce on them and broil them and everything, but y'all, I just don't feel like it. I'm gonna get them out on a plate. I'm gonna put a little bit of the extra sauce maybe on it. That may be all. And I was gonna make pasta salad and I just didn't feel good. So I threw some steak fries over into my air fryer. I use these Red Robin brand. And actually on the directions, it doesn't say anything about frying these. It just talks about putting them in the oven. So I'm hoping that they turn out good. So we will find out. These really are, look at that. They're falling off of the bone. I mean, that bone is clean. <laughs> And y'all seen how easy it was to make this. I mean, very easy. It took me just a matter of a few minutes throwing them in the crock pot this morning with that barbecue sauce and everything on it. And now look, we have ribs that are just falling off the bone. <laughs> and these have cooked probably about um, nine hours. So, cause it said seven to nine hours. And they've been in there right at about nine hours now. So I'm going to spoon a little bit of this because this is what it said to do. I guess so it kind of warms this up a little. I'll spoon a little bit of that into my sauce that's been in the refrigerator. And then I'm just going to kind of rub this over. And I'll bring you all over there and show you. And now I'm just going to kind of take some of this barbecue sauce that I have and just kind of rub it over this meat and I may just actually set it over here to the side and we may just put it on our meat whenever we eat because I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover it all very good. Yeah, I just don't feel good so normally I would have made a bigger fuss and made more stuff. Like I said, I, I had originally planned to make a pasta salad and all that kind of stuff and did not happen y'all but at least my family will have something to eat so that is a plus but i'll tell you what when i'm done cooking or when i'm done eating and everything i'm gonna relax for the rest of the night because oh y'all this cold is kicking my butt so they're not beautiful but i'm telling y'all these are these are gonna be good. So, as soon as I get my my steak fries done, we will sit down and we'll try all this out and let y'all know okay, how we Okay, y'all, like we got the steak fries done. I put a little salt on them. A few of them got a little dark, but I think they're gonna be okay. There's our ribs and then some of that extra sauce. And y'all, that's what we're, we're just gonna call that supper. So, we will sit down and let and make our plates and let you know what we think. I almost forgot to get the reactions. Potatoes. How do you like the food? Good? Yeah. Good. How about you, Adrian? My tooth hurts. His tooth hurts. He has a, a tooth that's trying to come out, so he hasn't really ate very much. 
and we bought some bar stools <laughs> and two of them are really tall he's sitting on it and no he's standing, no, he's standing on, it. on it anyways we didn't realize how tall they were but courtney went outside so i can't get her opinion mine is all gone it was really good y'all like i said falling off the Looks bone like so good yeah courtney ate all of hers and these turned out great in the air fryer I would have cooked them. I think next time I'd cook them a little bit less time, a few minutes less. I think they'd be perfect then. They're a little crunchy though. Yeah, they were a little bit crunchy, but yep. Very well, good, y'all. Right. And easy. Mm -hmm.